Kalimadhe to all friends online. Thank you for joining us on Saturday morning. Today we will have our honored guest with us, Alwaiza Rashida Nur Muhammad Hunzai Sahiba. She'll be continuing to talk about pillars of Islam, the fifth pillar, song, and sixth, Hajj. Rashida Sahiba, are you already here? Yes, I am Niyama Sahiba, Yaali Madad. Malali Madad, Malali Madad. So I'll let you start uh, talking on your topic. Thank you for joining us, friends, and thank you, Rashida Sahiba, Yaali Madad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Um, first and foremost, with the dua greeting of uh, Ya Ali Madad, I just want to say that you know uh, it's Saturday morning in United States and in Canada with your varying time zones, and here in the uh, in United Kingdom it is 1 p.m. exactly now, um, which means that everybody who has uh, uh, joined us online is now attending a majlis of knowledge a majlis assembly gathering of ilm of knowledge and i hope that um, many of you are aware that in kalame maula which is attributed to maulana ali but is in the hindi language in Kalame Maula, there is one verse in which it is said that if you wish to experience paradise on this earth during this physical life, then you should attend a majlis of ilm, an assembly of knowledge. So let us hope that uh, all of us today will get a taste of paradise because in uh, our Ismaili Tariqa, the Bhakti meaning of paradise is Hakikati knowledge. It is knowledge. And the opposite of that is uh, ignorance, as you know. And in the Ismaili Tariqa, ignorance is considered hell. So all of you who have taken the time and the trouble to come online, uh, be assured that today, you are sitting in a majlis of knowledge. You are going to experience paradise. And inshallah, if Mola wishes, our doubts, our um, confusions, our ignorance can be banished, can be uh, taken out of our minds and hearts today. Inshallah, if Mola so wishes. And for this, we pray as we normally do, that may Mola uh, help the listeners to hear correctly what is being said and uh, Memola help the speaker to convey this knowledge also in such a way that everybody can understand it and they feel motivated to learn more. So yes, uh, our series of Pillars of Islam continuing from last Saturday, Sunday, uh, today, we are going to look at the fifth and the sixth uh, pillars, uh, the Aim, the Aimul Islam, and the fifth pillar is Som in Arabic, in uh, Farsi, Rosa, also in Urdu, I suppose, and in Gujarati, uh, Gujarati fight to Roja, uh, because in the Gujarati language, the Z sound, the Z sound is quite difficult. And then we are also going to look at the sixth uh, pillar today, which is Hajj, which in English is uh, pilgrimage, pilgrimage, okay? So let's go to the next slide because I want to tell you that I'm repeating certain things. Why am I repeating? Because I know that many of you, are, uh, you know, attend many, many sessions and there is quite a likelihood, number one, that first of all, you have forgotten what uh, has been discussed last weekend because you have heard so many other things. Uh, number two, we should have a consistent approach to knowledge. Only then can you um, grasp 
and not only grasp, remember knowledge in a particular way, in a sequence, so that it makes sense to you, right? So my repetition here is this same diagram, which I have shown last weekend as well. And I showed it in the Jamakana series that first and foremost, we have to understand that Sirat al-Mustaqim, the true path, the right path, the straight path, is between us and our final goal, which is to merge in the Noor of God. This Sirat al-Mustaqim is a symbol. It is one of the allegories, parables of the Holy Quran. So it is, we have to understand it at different levels. Many, many different levels. But the level at which we are understanding now is that we are uh, looking at Sirat al-Mustaqim as a straight or the right path, which is divided into stages. And these stages are to begin with Sharia, Tariqat, Hakikat, and finally Marifat. And we have seen how um, Isma in the Ismaili Tariqa, we followed Sharia for around 500 years. And then at the, in the period of Alamot, Imam Hassan al-Azikri salam, he raised us, he raised our level of uh, um, sacrifice and of uh, challenge to the level of Hakikat. And we are not supposed to stop at Hakikat. We have to continue to refer to recognition of our soul in order to recognize God. So these are good things to repeat because every time you may receive a new dimension. And you remember that we discussed that these four stages are like the four levels of education, uh, preschool, primary, secondary, and university level. And the higher you go, the lower levels are all absorbed in the higher level. Or if you like, from the example of nature, bud, flower, raw fruit, and ripe fruit. And it is only the ripe fruit which contains the kernel and the seed which can draw, grow another tree. So that's a sign of perfection, of reaching the goal. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So we repeat again that uh, the difference between shariati or tanzili teachings and the uh, kiamati or ta'wili teachings is this. We are looking at these uh, four which are common with the exoteric uh, Muslims. We are looking at uh, salah or namaz on the shariati or tanzili level, which is the first level of the sirat al-mustaqim. We have uh, the day divided into different times, and then you are expected to recite five times namaz a day. But in the uh, Qiyamati Talim, the Talimat which was given to us by our Imams after Alamor, it you, you don't do that. You don't divide the day into times. You remember Allah all the time all the time. 3191 is about, uh, you know, reciting the name, remembering God standing, sitting, or lying on your side. And 7023 is about being da'imuzika, constant remembrance, constant remembrance. We looked at uh, zakat uh, on the shariati or the tanzili level, only two and a half percent of your savings, if there are any. But on the Kiamati Tawili level, 12.5% of your earnings. And today's uh, topic, the 30 days of fasting from food, if you're on the Tanzil or the Shariati level. Whereas on the Kiamati level, the fasting is throughout the year, throughout your life. And what is this fasting? From unethical acts. And then the Hajj, uh, fifth one, visit the physical house of Allah, which is in, in Makkah. And as you know, at the moment, 
because of the pandemic, nobody can go there from outside. Only the um, internal citizens of Saudi can go there. Whereas on the Kiamati level, to see the living spiritual house of Allah, that is the mazhar of the light of Allah, who is the imam of the time, that is the spiritual hajj. That is the Kiamati hajj. So I'm reminding you again, this has been mentioned many times, but I'm reminding you again that these are two frameworks, two systems. One is at the level of Sharia, the other is, is at the level of Kiamat or Hakikat. And there is a great difference in them, great difference in them. And you, I, if you remember, I had given you quotations from uh, Sayyidina Nasiruddin Tusi, who says that on the level of uh, Sharia, uh, time is divided and then God is remembered at certain times. But on the level of Kiyama, the entire time is immersed in the remembrance of God. These are two totally different world views. So this is important for you to remember and to understand. Okay, let's go to the next. This is just a repetition. The next slide is also a repetition. And the reason why I have put this is to give you Ginanic references. And the Ginan references are important because most of the Ginans we have are composed after the Kiamat was declared. After the Kiamat was declared. So there's a great deal of difference between the literature post Alamut and pre Alamut. This is another thing which you need to remember that, you know, we smileys, for us, Shariat is very important. Omo means keep joining the Jamaat regularly. First, accept the Shariat, which we did for 500 years. If we accept the Shariat, Tariqat, and Hakikat, and then merge ourselves in Marifat, that is the way to go. And in the second one, Omo means consider Shariat as true. Yes, it was the foundation. It was the foundation of the Muslims, early Muslims, initial mu uh, times of our history. If you consider the Sharia as true, you will immediately discover the Tariqat. Once you do that, imprint the Hakikat on the heart and you will unite with Ma'rifat. You see? They talk about this, and I will make some more comments because I have another Ginan to share with you later. So let us go on that uh, we are now coming to the fifth pillar. This is our topic today. Next slide, where we are talking about the, the fifth pillar, Psalm in Arabic and Rosa in Persian. Okay? So here we are, Quranic references. All you who believe. Fasting, siyamu, is prescribed for you, even as it was prescribed for those before you, that you may ward off evil. Short ayah, but full of meaning, that fasting is not something unique to Muslims. It was prescribed for those before Muslims, i.e., it was prescribed for Christians, it was prescribed for Jews, the, it was prescribed for the followers of Abraham, Noah, and others. They all had a type of fasting. And then in Surah 2, at 184, they're the same surah, one after the other, the ayats, fast a certain number of days. And the one who is sick among you, or on a journey, the same number of other days. And for those who can afford it, there is a ransom, the feeding of a person in need. But whoso does good of their own accord, it is better for them. And that you fast, antastamu, is better for you if you but knew. Now, here, look at the, the meanings here, right? that those who are feeling sick 
And you know, in the Sharia level, uh, women who are going through their menstrual cycle, etc., they cannot fast. They are not allowed to fast. They have to make up the days missed in another month of uh, the year. And if you are traveling, you are not allowed to fast until you come back from your travel. And if you, if there are amongst you those who can afford a ransom, I mean well-to-do people, you don't have to fast. All you have to do is to feed a person in need for each day of your fast. <laughs> See, look, uh, look at the Quranic teachings. <laughs> they are amazing, aren't they? Flexible. They give you a lot of options. And then they also explain to you that uh, those who do good of their own accord, meaning nobody tells them to do good things, but they do it. Just as in the first ayah, uh, that this uh, fasting is to ward off evil, you see? And we saw that in the namaz as well, in Surah um, 29, ayah 45, that salah prevents indecency and lewdness. But it is the zikr of Allah that is greater. So you can see that the whole purpose of Sharia or Hakika is to make the followers of Islam angelic, to help them to control their nafs, their amara, to help them to control their carnal animal instincts. That's the whole purpose. How you do it? Depends on the time, depends on the guidance of the uh, mazhar of God on earth. Let's go to the next one. This is also Quranic reference. This is also Surah uh, 2, 185. The month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Quran. A guidance for humankind and clear proof of the guidance. And the criterion of right and wrong. And whosoever is present, let him fast. Fal Yasum. Let him fast the month. And whosoever is uh, sick or on a journey, let them fast the same number of days. Allah desires for you ease. He desires not hardship for you. And that you should complete the period. And that you should magnify Allah for having guided you. And that perhaps you may be grateful. See, another purpose of to make you grateful. But here, this um, ayat begins with uh, the month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Quran. Very enigmatic. You know, those of you who have some idea of history, you know that the Quran was not uh, completely revealed in the month of Ramadan. The Quran was revealed over a span of 22 years and some months. And the Quran was uh, revealed in the night, in the day, uh, during battles, in peacetime, on the mountain, in the plain. There were many, many contexts of the revelation of the Quran. It was not entirely revealed in the month of Ramadan. So that straight away tells you there's a deeper meaning. I'm not going to go into that deeper meaning because I want, first of all, all of us to understand this progression of talimat, of teachings from sharia to tariqat to hakikat to marifat. But I'm just alerting you, when you read this, you should know that historically speaking, this is not correct, that the Quran was uh, the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed. Yeah? And then, Surah 19, Maryam, ayat number 26, is very interesting. <laughs> so God is commanding Mary, Maryam, so eat and drink and be consoled. And if you meet any mortal, say, indeed I have bowed a fast, so many, unto the merciful, and may not speak this day to any mortal. Now that tells you that in the Quran, there is not only one type of fasting, just as there is not only one type of prayer. There is also another type of fasting. 
And Hazrat Maryam is the exemplar of that. She was told by God not to speak to any other human being for three days, I think it was, yeah? She is not to speak. So keep a fast of uh, speaking. And because that is, if you look up the word psalm in the Arabic dictionary or in the concordance of the Quran, uh, you will find that the word psalm simply means to abstain from. It was the Prophet Muhammad who told his uh, followers to abstain from food and water for 30 days. But every prophet and every imam and every peer has always told uh, the followers of faith that they should abstain from evil. They should abstain from indecency. They should abstain from ingratitude. Okay, so let us go on. What, does, what do our imams tell us? And the very good next slide is the what is the essence of Psalm or Rosa? What is the essence? Hmm? And we get the answer in Molana Mustan Serbila the second in Pir Pandyate Jawan Murdi. Okay? Just to point out that Molana Mustan Serbila is at the end of the 15th century, right? This is after Almor. Whereas Molana Mustan Serbila the first was before Alamor. And this book, Peer Pandate Jahan Mar, is so important, it has a title of Peer. And Pandate Jawan Mar, Jawan Mar, the equivalent in Arabic is Fata, La Fata Illa Ali. You know that this is translated so badly. Uh, <laughs> there is no hero like Ali, it doesn't mean hero at all. Uh, Fata means somebody who is at the peak, the peak of their attributes. So, Jawan Mar, and it, it, it doesn't have any gender connotations either, a male or a female, who have achieved the peak of perfection, physically, spiritually, and intellectually, would be called Jawan Mar or Fata. So, Molan Mustan Sirbillah, what does he tell the Jamaat? The whole year you must fast. Just as the Zahiris, the literalists, fast one month. The meaning of this fast is Riyazat, spiritual exercise, spiritual discipline. Watch yourselves. Keep yourselves away from bad qualities, evil and indecent actions and devilish acts, so that the mirror of your hearts may be gradually polished. Also know that in those 30 days <clears throat> during which the Zahir is fast, the Eid is only for one day. They fast 30 days in order to attain that one day and that again is a symbol. Just as they fast 30 days in order to attain one day, so you must undergo the entire life of difficulties, pain, have patience, do riyazat, and keep fasting internally in order to attain the beatific vision, lika, vidar of your Lord. So now look at this, it's completely telling you that this is about personal discipline, it is about personal spiritual progress and the the end goal of this spiritual progress is to attain the didar of light of nur not the sort of didar we are so used to by the grace and blessings and mercy of mullah you know zahiri didar is very very important and we all love zahiri didar but our aim is to have batini didar to see the Baker and Nurani, to see the luminous Nurani body of the Imam. And that Vida is very difficult to attain. Very, very difficult to attain. Let's go. Uh, the next uh, two are also from Pir Pandyate, John Murdi. They are very important. So that's why I have put them uh, in complete quotations here. 
because I know that some of you access these from the website and I want you to have these so that you can really uh, reflect on these things. The fast of the head, you see now he's coming to the detail. Mola is telling us that the fast, you, have, you can fast with your head. How? It means you treat your own head as the feet of the people, complete and utter humility, casting out from one's head the desire for superiority, greatness and pride, because these attributes befit only God, who is everlasting and the master of the kingdom. The fasting of the eye is that one must not cast covetous looks at women who are not lawful to you. The fasting of the ear is that he should abstain from listening to slander, gossip, backbiting. The fasting of the tongue is to avoid uttering abuse, you know, abusive language or slander. The fasting of the heart is to keep it free from doubt. Uh, look how difficult that one is. The fasting of the foot is to hold it back from wrong steps. And fasting of the hand is to keep it away from treachery. Thus, a Mormon should keep all his body parts in a state of fasting so that he may not be a wrongdoer. You know, we recite the Tasbih, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minazalimin. I am amongst the wrongdoers, Mawla. This is our Tasbih of Toba, one of them. We have many, this is one of them. And this is from uh, the story of Hazrat Yunus in the Quran. That we are doing zulum. We are... Uh, um, uh, uh, we are inflicting pain on our soul when we do bad things with our head, with our eyes, with our ears, with our tongue, with our heart, with our hands, with our feet. We are actually harming and giving pain uh, to our own souls. We are dirtying and polluting our souls. We should really be, in fact, the opposite. They should be like polished mirrors so that the nur of Mola can reflect in it. Just as for exoteric worship, the Zahiris make the physical ab ablution, you see. For Namaz, uh, for Salah, you, there is a whole system of uh, purification with water. If that is available, if it is not available with uh, clean, clean sand, dust. <laughs> so uh, Mola says that the, uh, just as for exoteric worship, the Zahiris make the physical evolution, the people of Hakikat must know the real spiritual evolution and accomplish it. The evolution of the head is to accept the Imam's Farman. And if you now match this with the previous one about the head should be lower than the feet of others, meaning do not have any arrogance, pride, the kaburi, you know, because the Kabur is what uh, brought the downfall of Shaitan, of Iblis. Don't have that pride. How will you achieve that? If you follow the Imam's Farman. The evolution of the hand is to give bayya, oath of allegiance to the Imam of the time. How can a hand that has pledged allegiance to the Imam of the time then go and be treacherous, can take away somebody's property without their permission, or to do such horrible things. Ablution of the foot is to walk on the path of the Imam, Sirat al Mustaqim, and according to his firma. Ablution of the heart is to keep it steady in the Imam's love. Very difficult, this one, ablution of the heart, because you hear so many negative things on the, this media and that media and elsewhere, right? And if your Iman is not firm, it can be easily shaken. And the only way to make your Iman firm is to have true knowledge, the knowledge of certainty. 
ablution of the tongue is to keep it always in the remembrance of the imam. You know, our peers say in the denounce that the tongue with which you utter the name of Mullah, how can that tell a lie? How can it slander or gossip or backbite? How can it swear and use abusive language? It just is not possible. Ablution of the ear is to hear the words of the Imam. Hear the words of the Imam. You know, think about that. You know, part of our Jamaat Khana ceremonies is that every day a Farman is recited. How many of us really listen to that? Uh, many people you will notice are reciting their tasbis during the <laughs> recitation of the Farman. And not only having heard it, how many of us go and reflect on it? Ablution of the eye is to see the didar of the imam. Ablution of the eye. Okay, so this is these are all quotations of Pir Pandyate Jawan Mardi. And now I want to show you how these are reflected in Pir Shamsh's Dinan. Let's go uh, to the next slide and you will see that. Um, there is so much consistency between what our imams say and what our peers and hujjas also say. Yeah? And you know, this is a famous peer Shamsh, whose binan I have already quoted about Manna Mera Musalla, Kaya Meri Masika, Allah Mera Kazi, Andar Bethikar Me Namaz Guzaru. The same peer who talks about the inner namaz, and the same peer now talking about the proper fasts. Hmm? Das Roja, he's talking about 10 fasts. They are batini, he says. I think in other translations, you will see the word batuni, but actually the Arabic word is batin, so it should be batini. I know the language evolves, and this is uh, in the Indian uh, language. But nevertheless, now I think we have enough knowledge to say Batini Bida and Batini Zahiri. Okay? So that's Roja Batini Kahia. There are 10 inner fasts. Awal Roja Sir. The first one is for the head. We have already heard from the Imam, Muslim Sir Billah, that it is not to be proud, arrogant, not to feel that you are superior to others. Duja Roja Chashamdai, the second fast concerns the eye. Trija Roja Nak, now he's also brought the turn of the nose. Jota Muk Kudije, that is the whole face. Panchma Zaban, you know, I told you that uh, in the Indian languages, the letter Z is very difficult, so it becomes Roja Jaban, not Zaban as it would be. So it is for the tongue. Chatha is for the ears. Satma, seventh. Dilna kahe, the seventh fast is for the heart. Do not harbor doubts and confusions and ambiguity about who the Imam is. Atma Roja is to, uh, is nafs. Nafs, and I think in the transliteration it was nafas. Uh, and I, I changed that to nafs because nafs is the Arabic word for soul. <clears throat> and then we continue on the next slide. Nauma Roja, Hat Pichana. The ninth fast recognizes that of the hands. Dasma of the feet. Fast Siti Pao Roja Kariye. Fast from head to feet. Esa Roja Karo Tame Jai. Go and practice such fast. Tab jay momen ke lai. Then only can you be called a momen. Re tu hi mara sacha sahiya das roja jay dare. O listener, ten fast whoever practices, they are the momen veer. You know, the word veer is a very courageous person. They are the courageous momen. You know, this type of fasting, the inner, the batin, uh, fasting, the hakikati fasting is not easy. <laughs> it's very challenging. It's very challenging. And you have to do it all your life. Man samjamli kare bolia pe shamshre. 
He's saying, let your heart understand these things. So says Krishna's. Okay. Let's go on. I've given you some now references from sayings of our holy imams. Molana Ali said, righteousness, taqwa, is the highest ethic. Righteousness, purity. Molana Chakra Sadiq, he told his uh, companions one day, be silent, dais. So he was instantly asked, how can a dai be silent? A dai is supposed to speak, 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 and uh, convert other people. What did the imam reply? He said, he replied, teach by your example, i.e. by the way you live your faith in your daily life. <laughs> teach by example, don't speak. Malana has a imam. How many times? Every Farman has something about this, right? Physical life is temporary. Spiritual life is eternal. Live your faith. Your faith is not only for you when you come to Jamatana. It is for 24 hours. Practice the ethics of your faith. Where? In your family, in your business, in your Jamaat, in the society, throughout your life. We have all heard this for months about the ethics. Everybody, every time the Imam points to the ethics, you know, every time he said, I remember one where he says, your entire life should be encased by the ethics of Islam. Enveloped by the, you should never step out of the ethics of Islam if you are a true moment. And you all know that the Diamond Jubilee emblem is Surah 49, Ayah 13, in which the most important sentence is, the noblest of you in the sight of Allah is the one best in conduct. Why do you think Hazrat Imam chose this ayah? The noblest of you in the eyes of Allah is the best in conduct. That is the real Rosa, to be the best in conduct. And that includes your physical, your spiritual, and your intellectual state. Right. Now, we've done enough on Rosa, I hope. We'll, let's go to the sixth pillar, which is about Hajj or pilgrimage. What is the Quranic reference? Very interesting. Lo, the first house appointed for humankind was that at Becca, a blessed place, a guidance to the peoples wherein are clear signs of Allah, the place where Abraham stood up to pray. And whosoever enters it is safe. And pilgrimage to the house is a duty unto Allah for humankind, for those who can find a way there. And that was explained by the Prophet, that to find a way there means that you have uh, already fulfilled your family responsibilities, you are in good health for this journey and the whole of it, that you have enough money to support yourself, you have all these conditions to fulfill. You know, nowadays, <laughs> people go on Hajj every year. That's not what's required. Once in your lifetime, if you, if you have already fulfilled all those things. But to me, the most important point here is that whoever enters this house in the Kaaba, in Makkah, they are safe. Yeah? So let's let's look at Baitullah on the next slide. Let's look at it. Even if you don't know too much uh, about our history of religion, but let's look at this point. We all know that the Kaaba, the actual house, has been destroyed by floods, earthquakes, all sorts of things. That's why Hazrat Ibrahim and his son, Hazrat Ismail, were commanded by Allah to rebuild it. <laughs> so the house itself is like any other physical house. We also know that when the Holy Prophet Muhammad finally entered Makkah uh, in a bloodless conquest, the first thing he did was to go to the Kaaba why? Because it was full of idols, 360 of them. And Molana Ali stood on the Prophet's shoulders 
to reach the ones which were very high in order to destroy them all. So we also know that that house, once upon a time, had you know idol worship, paganism. And then in modern times, if you have followed the news in the last uh, couple of decades, what have you uh, learned? We have learned that uh, there has been a terrorist attack on the Kaaba. The Saudi army had to deal with it. Huh? We have also heard that once a tunnel collapsed and it uh, caused a lot of, uh, you know, deaths, etc. And then more recently, we heard that at the place where pebbles are thrown at those uh, um, symbols of shaitan, there was a stampede. And I think something like two, three, four hundred Iranian pilgrims lost their lives. So then what is the meaning of that? Whoever enters it is safe. You have to ask yourself this. Is it really physically safe? The answer is no. So what is the Bhatini or esoteric meaning? Let's look at that. Put the slide on there. So Baytullah, the house of Allah, is a symbol. It's a symbol. It's a, 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 an allegory. It's a similitude. And in Arabic, that's called a misal symbol. But its meaning, which is called mamsul, is the imam of the time. Because the imam of the time is that personality in whom the light of God resides. If you go to the physical Kaaba, and people have done that for 1440 years, nobody has had the dar of uh, Allah there. Right? And I thought that I should share with you this incident which took place in Ottawa when the Imam, not the first time he went to Eastern Canada for the Diamond Jubilee, but the second time when he went, he was going to do the Didar in Western Canada, but first he stopped in Ottawa in May 2018. And the Governor General at that time, Her Excellency the Right Honorable Julie Payette, of course, invited Haz Imam to Rideau Hall uh, to celebrate his Diamond Jubilee. Uh, you know, Canada absolutely adores the Imam of the time. And uh, she uh, had a dinner at which, of course, she made a speech. And she said that prior to being the Governor General, uh, in fact, her exact words, in my previous life, <laughs> in my previous life, I was an astronaut. And one day, she was in the space station and they passed over Makkah. So you know that Saudi Arabia is a desert and the skies are very, very clear there, no clouds, right? Because they don't have rain. And uh, this, uh, it must have been a time of the day when the Kaaba was absolutely shining. Makkah was absolutely shining, right? So she said it was shining the bright sun and then turning to Hazar Imam, she said, it was a beacon of light like you are. Now, she's not a Muslim. She's certainly not an Ismaili. How did she manage to join, to link the symbol with the meaning? This is what we would call Taeed, <laughs> spiritual health. That this young lady, Governor General of Canada, she linked as an imam, the mazhar of the light of God, to the symbol, the house of God. It's a very lovely story. I hope that this story should be known in the Jamaat. But because we don't understand what she said about the, the two meeting, you have to explain it. That the house of God is just a symbol. It's made of bricks. It has been destroyed in the past, broken down. It had to be rebuilt. The real meaning is the imam of the time. Because everything which God has, house, book, light, name, everything of God is living, living. Not only living, but speaking with intellect and they are very noble this is what our dais have taught particularly say the al-mayat fidin shirazi 
that the asma of Allah are hayyatun, hayyatun, natikatun, akilatun, sharifa. That the, everything of God, the symbols are just symbols, but the real things of God are they are living, hayyatun, natikatun, speaking, akilatun, they are possessors of intellect, they are sharifa, they are noble. So the conclusion which I want to bring today here, yes, is that the esoteric meaning of Hajj is to have the dar of the living, speaking house of Allah. And whoever follows the farmans and guidance of the Imam of the time is safe and they cannot be harmed. Not by entering the physical house, uh, you know, you can uh, guarantee that you are not going, you are going to be safe. No. By entering the batini, the esoteric, the meaningful house, the real house of Allah, the Imam of the time. If you come within his da'wah, his uh, guidance, his farman, and if you follow them, then you will be safe physically, spiritually intellectually, morally, ethically, in every way. And this is, I just quoted that short Farman, which is in the printed booklet of 1962. You should practice your faith well. Yeah, you should practice, where are we? You should practice your faith well, and this will bring you happiness in your life. Remember always, Whatever happens, if you are staunch in your faith, you cannot be unhappy. You may be sad, you may be worried, but you will not be unhappy. And I think that is a very, uh, very much what I would like to end upon. That, uh, you know, I started by saying that all of us are in a majlis of knowledge. We are all going to have a taste of paradise, the paradise of knowledge. Uh, so it's fitting to end with this, that surely every human being's goal is to be happy and not to be unhappy. So if you want to be happy, really happy, you know, the real happiness, the lasting happiness, then that happiness is something which you can have through practicing your faith, on the Sirat al Mustaqim, under the Nurani guidance of the Imam of the time. I would like to finish here and uh, we can invite questions if there are any. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Rashida Sahiba, we have received one question. A friend says, Yari Madad, is the deeper meaning about being revealed in Hazrat Ali? as his name is Ramazan. That is a deeper meaning. The, the name Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar, the lunar calendar. And Molana Ali is number nine because he was a Sas. And the Holy Prophet was a Natik. His number is 10, okay? So yes, the, uh, the Sas is below the uh, natik or with the natik as a pair, father and mother, spiritual father and mother, and the meaning of uh, <clears throat> the Quran being revealed in the month of Ramadan or in Ramadan is, as you know, that uh, uh, the Prophet was receive, receiving the Tanzil, the exoteric, and at the same time, Maulana Ali was receive, receiving the Ta'wil, the esoteric meaning. And that is why it was so important to have uh, both of them uh, to ensure that the community should benefit from the symbols as well as the meaning. Yes, indeed, that's what it means. And uh, if uh, uh, any of you are interested to you know, follow this up, uh, I recommend that you look at, uh, I'm going to look it up myself to make sure I'm giving you the correct uh, ayat, it is Surah Rad, which is 13, 
Surah Raj, the very last ayat, which is number 43. Yes, the disbelievers used to tell the Prophet, you are not a messenger of Allah. So the so Allah commanded the Prophet to say, Kul, yes, say, Allah is sufficient witness between me and you, and also he who possesses the knowledge of the book. In Arabic, woman in the hu ilmul kitab. See? The one who has knowledge of the book. Of course, the translation is wrong. The translation is wrong. But this is it that in Islam you have two witnesses for things. So the Prophet was commanded to say, Allah is sufficient for me as a witness, and the one, two of them now, you see, two witnesses, Allah and the one who had the knowledge of the book. Who was that? It was Mawlan Ali. Yes, exactly. Yes. Thank you, Rashida Saga. I received another question which says, what is the relationship between Paj Bara Sal Majlis and the Hajj? As my parents used to say that attending that Majlis is as if you are doing Hajj. Surely we can say that for not any Majlises, but for going to Jamaat <laughs> There are many moments who receive Dida when they go to Jamaatana, whether it is Majlis or not. Uh, I think this is one of those uh, folk tales which every community has. Uh, and uh, I would not give it too much emphasis because first and foremost, uh, the questioner, I hope you realize that these Majalis are only part of the South Indian tradition of Ismailis. Uh, they do not have these majalis in Syria or in Iran or in Afghanistan or in the northern areas of Pakistan, certainly not in Tajikistan nor in China. So does that mean that those people who don't have Panch Barsa will not have uh, and not experience Hajj? No. Hajj, the real meaning of doing Hajj is when we sit in the presence of the Imam physically and also receive his Nurani Dida. That we don't sit there and think, oh, he's a celebrity, you know? No. We think of him as the Noor of Allah, right? And you feel that. That is a real Hajj. SubhanAllah, <laughs> SubhanAllah. Okay, there is one more question. So it's interestingly, a uh, comment has been posted about Dua and Giryazari. I don't see any questions in the chat. I wonder if friends would like to unmute themselves and have a question. Otherwise, I would humbly request Rashida Saiba to please do some duashes and do some giryazari because I've heard your giryazari and we all are learning how to do giryazari. It would be wonderful to hear you say a few words and say some prayers. So first, let me ask. So I see another question. Can you talk about Bakka instead of Makkah and the Tawil of Bakka as related to weeping, to Giryauzari, to shedding tears, to weeping? Okay. What is the source of this information? I did hear Shanas Saiba mentioning it in one of her lectures recently about meaning of Bakka and its relationship to Giryauzari. So, uh, <laughs> but you know, there are two Bakkas, right? There is also a B A Q A apostrophe, Bakka, which is the opposite of Fana, right? And the one, the Bakka, the Bekka, which I have used here from the Quran, is a capital B E K K A A. So, you that's why I, I had to, I was a bit confused that you know, how is this uh, uh, Bekka, the one which is mentioned in the Quran is a place right it is uh, uh and you know because it's so the spelling is so close to makka only one letter is different m and b right right so uh there is some confusion there okay so uh, i don't think that we can do justice to that right yeah. so friends if you would like to unmute yourself to ask please related questions we would welcome that yeah my dad 
I have a question relating to your previous uh, session, mm. uh, whereby you mentioned there was a phrase in our third part of the dua, which uh, you you highlighted uh, if the full full sentence in the Quran. And my question is, uh, why was that omitted in the dua? If you know this answer, please, I would really like to know. OK. All right. Um, I don't know if you followed up uh, what I said about uh, a book on our website uh, called uh, Dua Essence of Ibadah. If I hold this book up for you, yeah, this is the book, Dua Essence of Ibadah. Okay. okay. That's, I would that's uh, a, really that's request you to go to that book. Uh, okay. You don't even have to uh, acquire it physically. You can download it, yes, because of the blessings of all this technology. Okay. Um, now, this, uh, uh, this thing which you refer to uh, is in the third part of a dua, which, as yeah. you know, is Surah 5, Ayat 67, right? That Ya ayyuhar rasulu ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbika anna aliyal mawlal mu'minin wa illam tafal etc. Right? So this phrase anna aliyan mawlal mu'minin conveyed to the people what has been conveyed to you that Ali is the Mola of the Mominin. And this was at the time of Gadir -e Kum. That's why the Prophet had to stop, because this is a very stern ayat. And this is why he used that phrase, he whose Mola I am, Ali is his Mola. Okay? Now, this phrase is missing from the Quran as we know it presently. Okay? And it is not the only phrase which is missing. I have heard uh, very uh, well-known scholars. Uh, there's a professor, Amir, Amir Moezi, who is a Iranian. Uh, he's a professor in a French university in Paris. And he, uh, I attended a talk by him here in London. And he said that many things are missing from the Quran, especially those related to the Ahl al -Bay to the Panjtan path, that they have been removed, right? Why have they been removed? Well, you have to remember that whoever uh, took power away from Molana Ali uh, at the time of the Prophet's passing, <laughs> they, it was uh, uh, not in their favor to keep these things in the Quran. Yeah, I'm sure you can understand that, right? But why, why was it missed in the Dua? So I'm coming to that. First, you need to know the background, right? So you know the background now, that a lot of things have been removed from the Quran, but nothing has been added. This is very important. Nothing has been added. Now, so in the present Qurans which we have, this is not there, right? This example that you have is from uh, the, the Jalaluddin uh, Suyuti's tafsir, which he wrote several years, decades ago, okay? Now, you're asking, why is it left out of the dua? Molana Sultan Muhammad Shah commissioned two people, two professors, one Arabic, one uh, um, Jawad Muscati, one I, I'm not too sure about, two professors of Arabic, and they were to compose this dua. So which Quran would they go to? The one which exists now, right? Sure. So that's why it's not there. That's a simple answer, okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Okay. Rashida Saifa, I see one uh, more question uh, in your Rosa when you were talking about the senses and you mentioned turn turning of the nose. Can you please elaborate turn, on it? Turn of the nose. Turn of the nose. Yeah. yeah, the nose. Yeah, well, you know, the nose has a powerful sense, as you know right and you can equally smell uh, good scents like perfume or you can smell nasty things right yeah so yes even the nose is one of your 
five senses and you have to protect your nose from uh, things which smell bad. <laughs> what smells bad? <laughs> yeah, evil actions smell bad. <laughs> so keep your nose safe from such things, right? You, uh, remember that in poetry and other things, you don't have to be too literal. You should try and understand the symbolic meaning as well, right? So the the nose is very important. I mean, you know very well that one of the signs of COVID is that you lose your sense of smell. So smell is very important. And like I said, uh, you can go to a place which has uh, decaying stuff and the smell would be so bad you will run away. But this is a physical smell. In the same way, evil actions produce a bathini smell, right? So protect your nose from that, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I think that people who advance in Ibadah, their senses become sharper. Their senses definitely become sharper, okay? Thank you, Rashida Saiba. Uh, I do not see any questions. Uh, Naveen Saiba, Kamara Saib, do you see any questions? Have you received any questions? Uh, okay. No, Abba, I don't see any questions. Thank you. All right, Rashida Saiba, if you still have some time yeah. for us, we would love you yes. to yes. do some more. Kiya Zari, thank you, Rashida Saiba. Uh, first and foremost, <laughs> because I don't attend uh, the other sessions, I don't know. Jiriya uh, Uzari is a Farsi compound word that it means to entreat, to beseech with tears. Yes, to supplicate, to consider yourself extremely weak, nothing, humble, indigent, needy, and therefore you are uh, uh, entreating, beseeching, supplicating to Mola to help you. So that's the first thing. And the effectiveness of your Giryauzari is if you, while you are doing this Giryauzari, you feel, uh, uh, you know, you can feel lots of things. You can feel goose pimples, you can feel your eyes uh, watering, uh, you can feel your throat um, choking up. These are all signs of a successful Giryauzari. And this type of Giryavzari is possible with uh, zikr, with the names of Mola, uh, when they are recited with understanding and with really feeling. But it is more likely, when you start, it is more likely if you recite your own duas, your own entreaties and supplications. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, that every day in Jamaat Khana, we have Giryazari. But because this is a congregational thing, they are set words. They are not different from one day to the other. Right? They are exactly the same words, uh, different person, but the words will be the same. Yeah? Mukhi Kamaliya do tasbihs at the end of the duas. They are set words, which are given by the Tarika board. They cannot go away from these words okay so this means that uh, things become very formal and then once these things are known to you sometimes you don't even concentrate therefore in islam it is very important for uh, uh, we ourselves to form our words and to form different words on different occasions and this is what uh, Hazrat Dawood used to do. You know, Hazrat Dawood was a prophet and a king as well. But he had this knack, you know, he had this gift, a blessing, that he could uh, verbalize his feelings in such a way, a poetic way, uh, that, um, you know, he used to go into a trance and he used to start dancing, etc. Et and because his words are so inspirational, that in fact uh, we believe that the Zabur is also one of the four books of Revelation that we know of. Yeah, this is the background for people who are not aware or who have not thought about it. The importance of talking to Mola is, is, <laughs> is very underestimated in our Jamaat, I think, right? 
You know, there is a famous story of uh, Hazrat Musa that he was going up to Mount Sinai for the dark, and on the way he encounters a poor shepherd. And this shepherd is a totally sincere, devoted, you know, very religious moment. And he's talking to God. And he's saying to God, oh God, please come and uh, pay me a visit. If you come and pay me a visit, then I will milk my goats and give you warm milk to drink. And I will, uh, if you have any lice in your hair, I will take them out. You know, he was talking his shepherd language because that's what he did with his animals. And, but he was totally devoted. And when Hazrat Musa heard him speak like this, he was really annoyed. How can you speak to God like this? And he, you know, he scolded the poor shepherd so much that the shepherd shut up. And then Hazrat Musa went to the top of Mount Sinai. He didn't get the dark. He didn't get the dark. And God said to him, you are my prophet. You are supposed to bring people closer to me, not drive them away from me. So on his way down, <laughs> he stopped again near the shepherd and he apologized. The prophet apologized to the shepherd and told him, you should continue the way you're doing. See, it's not our words so much because, you know, people have different languages. They have a different level of literary expertise. It's not so much the words, but the feeling. So like I said, that on different occasions, you have, would have different feelings. Supposing something really good happens to you. In that mood, you would be full of gratitude. But if something really awful happens to you, you hear uh, some bad news, then it will be a mood of uh, sorrow, won't it? Of sadness, like the farman I used. You may be sad. You may be worried. So then your expression would be very different, okay? So the, this is the background. The important thing is to start. The important thing is to start. And, uh, and not compare yourself to somebody who does very good Giriyazari. <laughs> because if you do, you will never feel confident. The thing to understand and to remember is that you are having a personal conversation with your maker. With your Lord. If you keep that in mind, don't compare yourself to others and just let your words come to you. Okay? So, since you are, uh, Niamat has said that we should do that, then I will try now uh, to do some Giriyavzari. Kudawan, Kudawan, Imam Isaman, Do Jahan no Malik Mola, Mola Kudawan, Mola. We are so blessed to have been born in an esoteric tarika like Ismailism, a tarika which is guided every moment by you, Ilahi Nur. How can we ever, ever thank you enough, Mola? Mola Kudawan. Mola Kudawan, I'm Kobahot Esaske Mola. Keham Shukri Guzari Membohot. Come tell him, Mola. Mola Kudawan. When we look around us, Mola, we see so many people and they are trapped in the material world, Mola. They think that they are going to live indefinitely on. Mola, we see how the physical world traps so many people. Mola, Kudawan, we pray, Mola, that we really understand your farman about balance between deen and dunya, Mola. Mola Kudawan, give us the courage to fulfill our dunyavi 
our worldly duties and responsibilities, but always within the ethics of our faith that you are emphasizing, Mullah. Mullah Kudawan, Mullah Kudawan. This time, since Mullah Nasuldan Muhammad Shah, the 48th and now the 49th Jama is such a splendid part of the Ismaili history, Mullah. <laughs> it is so brilliant, Mullah. We have so many books, we have so much, so many resources, we have so many skills to attain knowledge, Mullah. But Mullah, with this flood of knowledge, please give us the power of discernment. Help us, Mullah, to realize what is good for us and what is not good for us. <laughs> give us a mind that analyzes and discerns. Mullah Kudavan, Mullah Kudavan, when we listen, help us to analyze and to reflect on what has been said. <laughs> Polish our memory so that we can remember the references, we can remember all the good things that we hear, Mola Kudavan. But Mola Kudavan, help us also to put them into action, Mola. Mola Kudavan, everybody in the world, every leader, every organization looks to you for guidance, Mola. Mola Kudavan. But we we have this guidance automatically. But let us not be ungrateful for it, Mola Kudavan. Let us be so grateful, both in feeling grateful, but also actively and practically grateful, Kudavan. Mola Kudavan, Bless the Jamaat everywhere with your Nurani protection, particularly at this time of the pandemic, Mola. This time of uncertainty, uncertainty Mola. <laughs> we particularly pray for the Jamaat in India, Mola, <laughs> because the situation there is extremely dire, Mola. But we pray for all human beings who are in trouble, Mola, because you have given us the lesson of the Nafsa Wahida Mola. Mola Kudaman, help Ismailis to be exemplary citizens of the globe. And let the Ismailis be those who set an example to the rest of the world. Mola Kudaman, that is the least we can do for all that you do for us. We are no Mola Nasha. Subhanallah, 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 Ameen, Ameen to all dua. Rishida Sahiba, we are truly humbled, grateful for your extra time today, doing such a beautiful Giriyawazari in Imam Huzur. We are showered with his blessings. Shukar Alhamdulillah in your form. Thank you so much for giving your time. We are very aware how busy you are. You have another session uh, upcoming in a couple hours. Thank you so much. And inshallah, we will see you tomorrow. Thank you. Yali Madad. Yali Madad. Mola Ali Madad to everybody. Mola Ali Madad. Yali Madad and thank you. Yali Madad. Yali Madad.